It's easy to figure out what your pattern is if the tennis racket comes to you and all the strings are still in it. Just simply count the mains that are in the racket. You look to see where the knots are. You look to see where they started the tennis racket. And uh, you simply take out the strings and string it the way it was strung when it came to you. Uh, that will work most of the time. That's assuming that it was strung correctly when you, when you did that. But sooner or later you're going to get a racket like this where it doesn't have any strings in it. And you have to figure out how you're going to string it. Uh, the easy way is to just go on the internet and look up the stringing pattern and start from there. But let's just take a look at this racket and see what we can determine about how this racket should be strung. This method is so easy it ought to be called cheating. If you look right here in the throat of the racket it tells you it's a 16 by 19 stringing pattern and the tension is 57 pounds plus or minus 5 pounds. Now all you have to do is determine where to start the mains, where to tie off the mains, where you're going to start your crosses, and where you're going to tie off the crosses. The first thing I'm going to do is try to determine where uh, my main start at. If I look at the throat of the racket, I have three loops down there for strings. So right here is the center of the racket. Since I have an odd number of loops for strings, I'll start in the throat right here and I'll pull from the head. Now I need to determine whether or not I'm going to skip any holes when I'm stringing a tennis racket. Okay, counting from the center of the racket now, this is grommet hole number one on the right hand side. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right on down the line. If I look at these grommet holes right here, this one, 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 they're all pointing down the racket. But if I look at this grommet hole right here, it's bent over to the left which means that's where a cross string went. If I look at the throat of the racket, right here is the center of my racket. So this is grommet hole 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then again, 8 points across the racket. So I'll skip grommet hole 8 and I'll go up with 9. It also makes it pretty easy for you to determine where you were uh, main strings go. If you look on the tennis racket, right here it's real hard to see, but there's a little white dot on this side of the grommet, and there's another one over here on this side of the grommet. This one up here, where they got a white dot on a black background, is a little easier to see. You got a little white there, a little white dot there, and the same thing on the opposite side of the racket, right here. So that tells you that your main strings go in every grommet hole until you get up to this little white dot. Then the next grommet hole doesn't have a white dot, so you skip that grommet hole, and that's grommet hole number 8. Then you go into grommet hole number 9, and since there's no more white dots till you get to the top of the racket, that's your last main. Head couldn't have made it any easier to figure out where to tie off your grommet hole, your strings at. Right here it says tie off cross. Right here it says tie off main. Look for the larger holes. Like this hole right here is number six. If I can get that paper far enough away from it, you can see that that grommet hole is much larger than in any of the other grommet holes. Uh, there's the one above it, which is, is quite a bit smaller. And then if I go up here to number 11, I'll see the same thing. Right there is grommet hole number 11, and that's a much larger grommet hole. If I count the grommet holes from the bottom center to the top center, that'll tell me how many grommet holes I've got in the racket if I double that. If I look at these grommet holes, there's 35 grommet holes on each side of this racket. If the number of grommet holes adds up to the number of strings, and I've got 16 mains, 19 crosses, then I have no shared holes in the tennis racket. If I look at the mains now, since I have an even number on both sides, I've got 16 mains, 8 on each side. If I start in the throat, I'll end at the throat. When I end at the throat of the racket, 
I want to tie off on the throat of the racket. So these means are going to tie off on the throat of the racket. Because I'm tying off at the throat of the racket, that means that I'm going to have to string this racket with two pieces of string because I want to string my crosses from the top down. I don't want to string my crosses from the bottom up. So anytime your tennis racket ends in the throat area with the mains, you want to use two-piece stringing. I've strung the center 14 mains in this tennis racket now. I'm ready to string my outside mains. When I first looked at this tennis racket, I determined that my mains skipped grommet hole 8 in the head and 8 in the throat. So when I run this last main now on the left side of my tennis racket, I want to skip grommet hole number 8 and go into grommet hole number 9, which means there's an empty grommet hole between the 7th and 9th uh, grommet holes. Okay, then I'm going to pull tension on the outside main on the left side of the racket. Then I'm going to tie it off. Remember that I said I was going to tie it off at 6th throat on the tennis racket. And that'll be on both sides of the tennis racket. Okay, I've got all my mains ran in now, and I've started my crosses with the first few crosses. All I need to do now is string the racket from the top to the bottom of the racket. Uh, there's a grommet hole in here now for every one of the cross strings. So all I have to do is string uh, from the top empty grommet holes down to the bottom empty grommet holes with my crosses and I've got my tennis racket strung. So I'm going to I'm going to use a starting knot this time to start my uh, crosses. I could also use a starting clamp and clamp down on this string on the outside of the frame, then pull tension against that clamp and then tie that string off later. But I'm just going to use a starting knot. Done stringing on my crosses now. Uh, and all I have to do is pull tension on this last cross. Uh, the problem is my string is about two inches shorter than going into my gripper. Actually, if I push it all the way forward, it's about a quarter of an inch shorter. So now I've got a problem where I can't get this short six inch piece of string into my gripper. Okay? That's when a starting clamp comes into play. I've got a scrap piece of string here, uh, and I'm going to run it through the loops on my starting clamp. And then I'm going to use this as a bridge. Sooner or later, if you're cutting string off of a reel, you're going to try to save just a few inches of string here and there, and it's not going to... Uh, save you string all the time because you're going to end up too short and have to start all over again. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull tension on this string using this loop through the starting clamp and use the starting clamp to clamp the string. Then I simply clamp off the string and I'm good to go. Now I've got another problem. I've got a really really short a loop here that I'm trying to tie my tie-off knot with. And I could take a pair of uh, bent nose pliers and try to pull with those bent nose pliers, but when I do that I'll have to squeeze the handle. And chances are I'm going to pull up on it like this, straight towards my face. And I don't want to do that because i got such a pretty face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my starting clamps again to pull tension, well, didn't quite get it, to pull tension on that on that knot, make sure I don't pull it all the way through. Then I can use this for like a T-handle and just put my uh, two fingers around the string, tighten up on the string, and I'm good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for the time. And uh, have fun spending those tennis rackets.